The next talk, titled Deep Design of Optics, is by Arel Chaim, Shael Malam, Alex Bronstein, Emmanuel Marom, and Raja Jiris, who will be giving the presentation. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Uh, so, today I will talk about um, how we may use uh, deep learning to replace MedMen design and specifically how we may uh, design optics using uh, deep learning. So when we think about a standard image processing or computer vision, usually we have a scene with people that we want to take a picture of. Then a light from these people go through a lens captured by a sensor and we get a digital image. Uh, in traditional uh, computer vision or machine learning, people would extract features and then uh, do some uh, face detection or something else. Now, in, so we, in traditional uh, computer vision, we're using handcrafted uh, features and uh, handcrafted uh, uh, algorithms. And then when uh, deep learning came, instead of using handcrafted uh, features, we uh, got the classifier and the features being learned at the same time. And from the digital image, we would get the final result uh, directly using a neural network. And the question that I want to ask today is whether we can go beyond that. Whether we should stop with deep learning at the image or whether we can go to the sensor and to the uh, lens level. Uh, and what I will show today is that if we use deep learning to uh, replace handcrafted features, maybe we can use also deep learning to replace handcrafted sensors or handcrafted lenses or maybe handcrafted people, but I will stop here. <laughs> now, uh, just will mention one thing. So clearly deep learning applied to many scenarios, not just to images. We were using it to detect exoplanets, and you can look at this work, but I will stick with images in this work. So I will talk about two works that we uh, use this trick. Uh, the first work uh, looked at the problem of image denoising. In image denoising, let's assume that you have a noisy image that you took in low light conditions, and you want to get the original image that you have in good lighting conditions. And here, in standard cameras, uh, today all of us are using our cell phones to take a camera, to take uh, photos. And the optics that we have in our uh, phones are much smaller uh, than the optics that we were using in uh, standard uh, DSLR cameras. And therefore, we have much uh, bigger distortion, uh, whether in MSC or in the perceptual distortion, as we had before. Uh, and but most of the algorithms that uh, we're focusing on image processing try to get a good image from the digital image captured, but we know that when we get an image at the sensor, we have the mosaicing, gamma correction, coloring, and many other uh, things that happen, but most of the work that deal with image processing focus just at one element, or either at the mosaicing or the noising or gamma correction, or uh, white balancing, uh, or they combine two elements like the mosaicing and the noising. And the question is whether we can replace the whole ISP by a neural network. So in one work that was done together with Eli Schwartz and Alex Bronstein, uh, we suggested to replace the whole image processing pipeline by a neural network. So in standard ISP that you have in phones, you get, capture this image and then you get this image if you are in low light conditions or you capture this image and you get this image if you are in good light conditions. And you have all these blocks in the ISP of a phone, the white balance, uh, the, the mosaicing, the denoising, the color transform and so on. And our goal is to go from the low light image, from the raw low light image to the uh, good a, a image that is in the good lighting conditions. And we propose to design a neural network that has two levels, a low level and high level, where the low level 
is in charge of making the denoising and the mosaicing and the low level uh, problems of the image. And the high level of the network is correcting the high level problems like the color problems. And we took lots of images that were captured in low light conditions, in high light conditions. And then we showed that if we look at the just the images in the low light conditions and look just at the denoising and the demosaicing problem and compare to other algorithms. So, so if we just focus at the low level network, we get better performance than other algorithms that just do denoising and demosaicing. And if, and uh, for example, at this uh, data set, if you compare it to the bilinear and the algorithm, you can see our result. If you compare to the previous uh, state of the art, you can see that here we don't get uh, the more artifacts. But as I say, the more interesting thing is not just doing the noising and the mosaicing as done in, as in our low level part of the network, but also uh, to do the whole uh, ISP. So we captured lots of low level images, uh, low light images and high light images in good conditions. And we trained the neural network to go from the low light to the, uh, the well-lit conditions, and we use the Amazon Mechanical Turk to check what, how the quality of our image compared to the quality of the well-lit image, and here we can see the result. If you compare the whole image to the, to the quality of the whole image of our construction to the one of the well-lit image, you can see that we get a comparable uh, performance, and we compare it also to the output of the ISP of the phone that we used, and you can see that we got better, uh, better results. Here you can uh, see the result that the phone that we used the uh, output, here you can see our output. And if I will summarize, I, I think that if instead of just trying to solve uh, sub-problems in an optimal way, if we will solve the whole problem in a sub-optimal way, you can see that we get better reconstruction. So I believe that uh, Samsung here, they have the knowledge on all the ISP and all the uh, parts of the phone that they manufacture. We have no idea what they have inside, but because we solve things in an end-to-end -end fashion, we get better construction. Now, it, what I showed you till now is that we can take the information from the sensor and get an image and do better. Now I will go further. Let's assume that we have a scene and we want to reconstruct both the image and the depth map of the image. And for this, we want to change the sensor. Now, instead of designing the sensor by ourselves, we add a mask to the sensor. And this mask is a phase mask, and it has some parameters. And we let a neural network to learn what are the parameters of this mask, together with the reconstruction algorithm that try to a recover from this a coded image, the all-in-focus image, and the depth map. So instead of designing this mask by ourselves, we put this mask as part of the learning process. And I think that this is something that we should start going in this direction. So till now, I see that most of the works are looking at the raw image or a coded raw image and then applying some deep learning algorithms on it, I think we should start considering uh, freeing the parameters of the optics that we are using and putting them also as part of the training of the network. And I will show how we did it in this work. Now, in standard optical imaging, when you take a photo of an object, you want this object to be in focus, so let's assume that we have this object and the rays of this object go through a lens. And if the object is in the focus plan, then you will get the object to be in focus. Yet, if the object is not in focus, a different frequencies has different distortion in their uh, contrast. So you can see that here you get an uh, object which is in focus, and here you have an object which is not in focus. And these gamma uh, values depend on how much you are not in focus. So uh, the more you are not in focus, uh, the less, the, the, the more uh, change in contrast you get for the different uh, frequencies. Now, 
one way to approach this is to try to uh, make some coding or in the aperture of the camera uh, in order to get a depth map of an image uh, or an image that is in all focus and this was done by Nat Levine in 2007 and also in the other previous works where a coding of the mask was done uh, so, so, the ampli so, so there was an amplitude coding of the mask so uh, there was a mask that was added to the optics which is kind of binary that it's either pass light or uh, block the light and in this way some information were coded in the capture image and it was possible to get a depth map or all in focus image. The problem with uh, amplitude masks is that they degrade the amount of light and when you degrade the, degrade the amount of light you increase the noise that you get and we want to, uh, so, uh, we don't want to do that. So instead of an amplitude mask what we use in this work we use a phase mask. A phase mask um, cause if you look at uh, this video you can see that if in standard optics you have all the colors being in focus at the same location when we add the phase mask you have the R, G and B being out of focus in different locations. So the focus point of the R and the focus point of the G and the focus point of the blue is, are in different locations and therefore if we take a photo and we see that the red color is in focus, we understand what is the depth of this image. If we take a photo and we see that the green is in focus, we understand that it's in another depth and if we see, take a photo and we, take, uh, we see that the blue is in focus, we understand that the image is in a different depth. Clearly we have different objects in different depths and it's a bit more complicated and therefore instead of trying to do it by ourselves, we let a network to do it in, uh, instead of us. But this is the concept be, uh, behind this face mask. It just let each color to be in a different focus point and this allow us to understand what is the depth of each uh, color. And this allow us to get these depth reconstructions. So for example we have this object and we get this depth reconstruction. This is another example of depth reconstruction and this is another example. Um, all of them are taken by a camera designed in uh, our, our lab uh, together with uh, Professor Emmanuel Marom. And now at the beginning I said that okay we don't, we, we don't want only to design a neural network that we reconstruct the depth, we want also to design the optical mask that we add to the system. And to do that we need some kind of ground truth to do the reconstruction process. So what we do, we use some input scene for which we have the ground truth depth map. For this we use Blender. We created, a da uh, we, use a, we use some existing uh, data sets and we also cre created additional data set for uh, 3D objects with their ground truth uh, depth uh, and RGB colors. And then in, in, inside the simulation we apply a process which is very similar to what the mask is doing in reality. So we have the imaging process being part of the neural network. So the first level of the neural network is basically the imaging process. So our ne neural network get the input scene which is the RGB colors and the depth. The first layer of the neural network applies the imaging uh, which include buyer, face mask and noise. Then we get the coded image. After we have the coded image we apply a neural network that makes the reconstruction of the depth map and we train the neural network to design both the phase max that is applied during the simulation and to reconstruct the final ground truth uh, depth map. These are examples of the uh, uh, of the blender video that we used. Uh, it is available online if you want to use it. Uh, we, ca we call it the Tau Agent dataset and we give our network both the RGB colors and the depth map and the first layer of the network as I said learns how to do the imaging but we have this, but this layer is differentiable and therefore when you, we do the back propagation we can also update the parameters of the phase mask. Now after we finished all the simulation 
we have the parameter of the face mask, we can go to the lab, we can manufacture it, and then we can do the reconstruction just by this part of the network. And, you can, and we can do this not only uh, to get a depth of construction, but we can do it to get all in focus imaging or changing the focus point of a scene. So here you can see results of refocusing of a scene that we uh, achieved using our method. And we have another neural network that is used for refocusing. I will not go into the details because of time, but it's a very similar concept. And we can also with this neural network train network to give us all in focus image uh, and design the phase map at the same time. And you can see that if we compare our result with the previous result that didn't, didn't use mass training, we get 2 dB improvement in PSNR and better improvement compared to other methods. And here you can compare a different, uh, here you can see the input scene which is uh, all in focus and here you can see uh, one previous method and our method you can see that we get an image that is much more focused. Here you may see other results. So this is a tribute of uh, Shai for uh, the Beatles, so he's a fan of them, and so we decided to take uh, photos of their album. And you can see here the result of our reconstruction and compare it to previous reconstruction results. Uh, and here you can see more results of our reconstruction of text, and you can see that the reconstruction that we get is clearer than uh, previous solutions. And the nice thing that we get is, so here we have other results, but the nice thing that we get is that because we designed the face mask as part of the network, the neural network that we need to use for a depth reconstruction is much faster than other neural networks for depth reconstruction. So for example, you have this depth, a neural network for depth reconstruction of Zank et al. It needs 3.6 seconds on a GPU, while our network needs 0.3 seconds on a GPU. And the difference is that Zang et al. make all the processing on the image, and our processing for the depth reconstruction, part of them are done by the face mask, and you may think of it as processing in the speed of light. So we, have, so we spare these three seconds by having the processing in the speed of light by the face mask. So if we may summarize, I believe that in this work we uh, provide a new paradigm for designing uh, optics. Till now in the field of computational imaging, you change also the optics, but then when you do the reconstruction, you use a neural network, but you change the optics by some understanding of how things should be. Here, we suggest that we should change both, let the network learn both the optic parameters and uh, the image reconstruction or the scene reconstruction. And one last note, I am looking for good postdocs in computational imaging, and if you thought that this talk is boring and you want something more theoretical, so I have also an open position for theory of deep learning that is in collaboration with John Bruna from NYU. So if you are interested, so you can approach me. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah. Hi. Thanks for a very nice talk. Uh, and uh, I had a small question you kind of hinted in the, in the slide. But you're optimizing for image quality uh, with your, you know, new optics. How about, you know, uh, optimizing for uh, uh, recognizability or, you know, classification results, detection results, stuff like that? Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned, so w what we show here is, I think, just a, you may think of it as a proof of concept that you can design the optics together with the final results for a, depth reconstruction or all in focus, but clearly you can jointly design the optics for classification tasks or for other tasks. So uh, I think there was one work that tried to uh, do that. There was a work that tried to see what components uh, in the image signal processing pipeline you need if you want to do classification. 
and they found that most of the components you don't need. You just need one component in all the image, in all the ISP if you want to do just classification. So this work did something that is slightly different that we, than what we did here. They analyzed what components you need in the ISP if you just want to do classification. And they found that you don't need most of the things. So, uh, But I, I agree that you may add optical elements and train them to get better classification. Thank you. Follow-up question. Um, can you have several phase coding masks in order to do the entire uh, training or testing on CNN? So you may use this phase mask in stereo. So you may have two lenses with two different phase masks. But have several sequentially, so you have the entire CNN essentially done. Uh, okay, so there is one research direction that we are thinking of, and I, uh, I know that other research groups are trying to think of, is whether we can do all the neural network in the speed of light using optics. So I think there was a nature or a science paper that tried to do it and showed some results on MNIST. Uh, but I think most of their components were linear. The challenge is to add the nonlinear component, and we have some thoughts of it. So uh, for this, I need the postdoc. <laughs> Any more questions? OK, let's thank the speaker. All the speakers, I'll switch to